Hello everyone, uh, I'm Jim Durrett, Mayor of Montgomery County and just excited to bring you another one of our Spotlight Series where we're shining the spotlight on uh, department heads, elected officials, people in Montgomery County that make our county uh, work as good as it does each and every day and make it the great place that it is. And so today I'm interviewing uh, a longtime friend, somebody I've known a long time, and I'm Lisa McLean, and Lisa, your title is Administrator of Driver Safety, correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Wow, that's a mouthful, isn't it? It is, it well, is. Well, good. So before we get started, uh, because I know people are gonna really wanna know about what your job is, because it really, Administrator of Driver Safety doesn't really say what you do. That's but, correct. But, but we'll get into that, but okay. let's start off with just some personal history about Lisa. Okay. Tell us about Lisa. Okay. Well, like you, I'm a native of Clarksville, born and raised here, been here my entire life. Uh, I have uh, some family here. I have family in Nashville and in Williamson County. And um, uh, I like to uh, involve myself in the community. I'm involved in a lot of civic organizations. And so um, I think Clarksville's the best place to live. So that's why I've here. Awesome, awesome. So how long have you been working for Montgomery County? Well, you know, like you, me, you know, me with the county, you with the city, we both started when we were five. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been in my current position uh, for 20 years as uh, the Administrator of Driver Safety. Prior to that, I actually started working uh, with the Highway Department, uh, Gus Storfleet. And he was the supervisor there. Red Hollis was assistant supervisor. I know you yeah. know them very well, working with the street department. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, Jeff Bryant, uh, I just talked, spoke to him uh, lately, and I, and I told him, I said, did you know that I started out with the highway department? And he said, well, I do now. There's a picture of you on the board. And <laughs> it's been 20 years since I've worked there. And I'm like, yeah. well, yep, I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> So I started out with the highway department, so I've just kind of moved up through the ranks. And yeah. after that, I moved to the safety department, and uh, then I've been in this position for for 20 years. When did you start the highway department? When? Yeah. 1980. 1980. Yes, sir. Wow, awesome. Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, that's great. That's great. So, Lisa, talk a little bit about what your job is. Okay. Uh, kind of what... what Number one, what's a, there's probably not a, uh, what a typical day looks like, but it's, talk about, talk about what your job really is. Okay. It's, I'm a, I'm a note taker, so I have my calendar here. I do, every day's different in, in, in my, in my profession. And, um, so just kind of going back, I work in highway traffic safety. So, uh, a big part of what I do is with our traffic safety task force. That's made up of all the branches of law enforcement, uh, THP, Sheriff's Office, CPD, Fort Campbell Military Police, Austin P Police, EMS, EMA, DA's Office, uh, the uh, Mayor of the County Mayor's Office, City Street Department, uh, the Highway Departments. So we have a lot of different agencies. We all come together, and our focus is trying to reduce tra uh, traffic crashes and fatalities in Montgomery County. We do that through uh, enforcement, engineering and education mm -hmm. and so that's kind of we work together on that so I may be I'm looking at my calendar here put my glasses on here uh, looking at my calendar here so just kind of looking back through here I may have a day the last uh, couple of weeks and kind of what we got going on uh, what day may typically be um, teaching the driver improvement program those mm -hmm. are for drivers that get traffic uh, citations and they want to take a driver class so, and, and a lot of times a judge will like, as opposed to imposing a fine on somebody, they will, for lack of a better words, they sentence them to that class. Absolutely. Yeah. They'll do that to keep them accumulate points and keep that off their driveway. Yeah. Uh, and and, and, and there, those occur like just throughout the week or are they set days or? They are set days and I do those, the DART classes, WebEx now, they're all virtual online. Oh, they are? Yes, so I had a class uh, a week ago on that and I did that class like 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. People love it because they can take the class from their home or their office, makes it real convenient. Yeah. And then we just, I started a new driving program for the teens and that's called Teen Driver Awareness and I, uh, we combined that with the CPD stat class. So we'll go and I have our host agencies um, like back last summer, we had uh, EMS, 
and uh, Clarkson Fire Rescue, they were my host agencies. We did a mock crash and we did some in, inside training. We just had a class um, on the 7th of May um, and my host agencies was, was the CPD, the Sheriff's Office. We have two great speakers that speak on behalf of MAD. Um, and, um, and that's so, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. That is, yeah. yes, yes sir. And it was two, it was a uh, lady that had uh, lost her uh, son mm. in a traffic crash. And then another, um, Stephanie Rutherford, she, uh, her daughter was in a crash when she was like seven years old and was paralyzed. Mm. So we had 80 students in that class. Wow. And that was uh, on Saturday on the 7th. And then um, going back here, uh, I am a uh, part of a lot of different organizations and coalitions task force uh, on the state level and local level. So uh, we had a task force meeting on occupant protection on a strategic plan. So I'm on, I'm on that board. And so we had a, we've had a meeting on that recently on that. We're trying to put together a plan uh, that we can uh, provide to the Tennessee Highway Safety Office on uh, goals and uh, just strategic plans on child pastor safety. Right. So I'm a child pastor uh, safety technician. So I do a lot of car seat events and, and uh, checks like that. I do those with law enforcement. Um, I do those once a month for the Department of um, Children Services. That's kind of a new program we started uh, last year. So I'm very proud of that. Those are for our, uh, the caseworkers. So they know how to install car seats. Awesome. Which and is so wonderful. you do that once a month. We do that once a month. It's a new program. They yeah, reached that, out to me. Program. The Department of, um, of um, Children's Services reached out to me last year. And so we started that. Um, so we had um, so we had another check of event last Friday. Uh, it was CPD and the Sheriff's Office and myself. We did a car seat out here at the Veterans Plaza and they advertised it. We had parents come through and check their car seats. Um, during um that somebody told me uh, I, and i may have dreamed this but the car seats expire they do expire they expire well, i mean I, I know i know like cheese and mayonnaise and mustard and all that stuff expires but how does a car seat expire they they do that most of them expire after six years unless you have a one in three which can be a rear facing uh forward facing car seat and then a booster seat that can go with that child throughout their life until they are um, under four feet nine, and uh, but they do expire after those expire uh, in ten years. The ones that are just like rear facing or booster seats or the just four facing car seats or convertible seats, they expire after six years because the pl the plastic gets weak, the straps may get okay. get weak, and if they if a uh, if a um, if there's a vehicle crash and uh, there's a car seat in there and the vehicle has to be towed, then that car seat needs to be replaced. Wow. And so the state has uh, has uh, a child pastor safety uh, laws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so Lisa, what what do you see as for for short term challenges in your role? And it, your role is educational, I know, and mm -hmm. it, it's uh, you're not it. You you work with the enforcement side of it. You work with the engineering side of it. But your your role is more the educational role. How, how do you what what's what shorten long term challenges? Well, I would say probably the short term challenges is just finding time to get into all, in all these programs. I do a lot in the school system. Yeah. I do programs there. You know, we have uh, twenty four elementary schools. I do an Ali Otter booster seat program, mm -hmm. and that's wonderful. That educates them on booster seats and car seats, and um, and we do a lot of events in the in the high schools. Um, we do. Uh, different programs through the called uh it's called reduced tn crashes so it's a lot of free programs that we do in the schools mm -hmm. so just challenging trying to do all that you know get them get in the schools and um just find the time to do that yeah because it's much needed our teen crashes have gone up statewide you know united states wide teen crashes and so, you know, we're trying to focus yeah. on, on those. Probably long term with our task force, we, we've done a lot with them. I would say uh, the concentration for myself is going to be in transportation. We keep saying transportation, transportation, that's the problem, you know, with uh, congestion, we've got yeah. people coming here, um, crashes have increased. 
you know, we've had just, we've had several fatalities yeah. in the last couple of weeks. Do you, uh, uh, obviously mobile phones are like a big, big distraction. That's a big distraction. We just had a, but a distracted driving called a, uh, Operation Hands Down Tennessee, Hands Free Tennessee. And um, we, we did this bus tour with all the law enforcement mm -hmm. through the Tennessee Highway Safety Office. And so we were actually looking for drivers that were texting and driving and no seat belts and other things like that. Those are the two major things. And it was really, really um, uh, unbelievable how many people drive and text and talk on the phone or not wearing seat belts. Right. Those are two big things that, that, we, that we saw. So yeah, that's challenging. So we do these different programs and projects like that, and it's really worked out good working as a team because I'm a one person department. And so I've been able to do these things, you know, with being a, you know, a team right. with the, the task force agencies. And they are, they're wonderful. You know, a lot of people about what I'm about to say will probably be like, he's an idiot. Don't listen to him, whatever. <laughs> but I wish our technology would get where, uh, if you're in your vehicle, you couldn't receive a text message. Uh, you could receive a phone call, mm -hmm. and and if 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 uh, you know, I think our society today uh, relies too much on a text message. Yes. And I don't think uh, I'm kind of getting into a social thing as opposed to your job thing, but. Uh, there's nothing that uh, somebody cannot say to you on the phone that they can't say to you on a text message. But right. it's convenience, it's all of that stuff, but I think that's what uh, is the distracted part of people taking their eye off the road because you have to read a text message. Sure. And, and with the technology that's in vehicles today, and even you can buy the technology to put in a vehicle that doesn't have it, you can do hands-free calling. Yes, that's right. And, and so you can you can like just push a button and answer your phone and you can talk. And I know that's distracted, distracting you as well mm -hmm. uh, because it, it it's happened to me. I, I've been talking hands free and drove right by where I want to go. Right. Because I get so involved in the conversation, but I'm not looking away and looking that's back. That's I'm not right. looking away. I'm not looking back. At least I am paying attention somewhat paying attention to the road. So I, I see that as a huge, huge challenge. It, uh, it's a big challenge. Looking off the road uh, to look at a text takes on average about 4.6 seconds. And that 4.6 seconds, that's similar to driving the length of a football field blindfolded while you're traveling about 55 miles an hour. Wow. So you can see wow. why crashes are you need to You need to say that again and slow it down. <laughs> Tell everybody that again. Okay, looking off the road, to look at to look to look at your phone to read your text takes on average about 4.6 seconds. In that 4.6 seconds, that is similar to driving the length of a football field blindfolded while you're traveling 55 miles an hour. Even looking off the road for two seconds, your vehicle travels 51 feet. So we're seeing a lot of fatalities and crashes on interstate because on average, if you're and on average, if you're traveling 70 miles an hour, which is the speed limit on interstate, it's going to take you 490 feet to get stopped. So we're seeing a lot of people looking at their phones or working on an iPad in their lap, looking down, and the vehicle in front of them stops or slows up. Well, they look up. By the time they look up, they don't have time to respond. Wow, so that's just, so scary. Yeah, so crashes so occur that way. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it is a big challenge. I think it's just, you know, it's just a matter of getting out there and educating drivers. And so that's what we're, you know, we're trying yeah. to do. The young, and it's it's good to get them at an early age. That's why I try to go into schools. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So if you're out there driving and you look at a text <laughs> message, it's going to take you about four point six seconds, and you're going to be blindfolded after that, or while you're doing that, as far as what the road looks like, and you could go in fifty five miles an hour, you can travel the length of a football field. That's mm -hmm. that's crazy. So let me let me change the topic a little bit. Uh, but that is so unreal. Um, so, you lived here all your life. I have. Yeah. Yes. So, yes, what made you want to get in in government work? What led you to the county highway department? And then, obviously, you've advanced in your career. But what started yeah, you in right. government? Well, I wanted to. I I felt like the government would be a good opportunity because I knew they had benefits 
you know, good benefits. Mm-hmm. And I just kind of learned that at a at a young age, try to get a you know a, get into a job where you're going to have those those benefits. And I was very fortunate to be hired right out of high school. You know, yeah. Uh, Mr. Gus or Fleet had had. Um, believed in me, you know? Yeah. So we started there and I knew when I when I started working there, I worked with just wonderful people and I just felt like I wanted to make a career in government at an early age and I, I felt like I wanted to advance myself. So um so I actually uh, got my degree in occupational safety and health after I started to work with the county. So I kinda wanted to awesome. go into that direction. Yeah. I had an opportunity probably in eighty nine to start teaching the driver's education program mm-hmm. through the highway department. So that's kind of what me, what got me interested in safety. And so yeah. I had the opportunity to go into the safety department with the county. They formed a new department. So that's kind of how it got started. Wow, awesome. So you were on the ground floor. And yes, sir, absolutely. That is and so I've cool. loved, I love my job. I've loved every yeah. minute of it. Would you recommend a life of public service for somebody? I, I absolutely would. Yeah. Yes, sir. It's, we have so many different departments, so many different professions that you can go into. So you have a broad range and, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's wonderful. Have a great leader. <laughs> well, thank you. And I've thank actually you. worked for six county executives. You are kidding me. I had, wow. I was sitting there thinking about that last night. Wow. Time. Wow. So I'm going to take a shot at this. Myself, Mayor Bowers. Mayor Wiley, Bob Thompson, Paul Lyle, Joel Plummer. Yes. Oh, wait, I forgot about one. Judge Beach. So it's actually seven. You work for Judge Beach, too? Yes. He he was right there, right? He left. See, he was a judge at that time. Yeah, yeah. 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 He retired just right, I think, right after I saw him. Hey, I did pretty good, didn't I? You did. You did well. You better not did. (laughs) Kind of a a county mayor historian. (laughs) No, I'm kidding. So, another question about living here your whole life. Um, If you you left here and you're, like, going downtown to eat or something, you see this couple walking around and they ask you a question or two and you find out that they're not from here, but they're thinking about moving here. Mm -hmm. Why would you tell them to move to Clarksville, Montgomery County? Well, of course, Clarksville is the best place to live. Um, You know, I'm kind of partial about that. But we have, we're kind of a small town feel, but we're more of a large town now. Mm -hmm. You know, we're close to Nashville. So you have all this entertainment close by. A lot of people want to live in Nashville. Uh, We have great job opportunities. We've got, that's Google that's come in here. Gonna have Amazon, you know, a lot of a lot of really good, uh, great companies yeah. here. So the industries there, county government, city government, that they have an opportunity opportunity to come and work here if they if they come here to work uh, and live. Um, downtown is growing. We've got the F and M Arena. That's a game changer there. That's going to be wonderful. We've got a lot of restaurants coming, you know, in. Um, we have a lot of great civic organizations. I'm involved in the Rotary, United Way, Leadership Clarksville. So there's a lot of opportunity there. We have great parks. Um, we live on the river, so they're, you know. Yeah. It, and we're just growing, and I think it's a great time to get, to, to move to Clarksville. Um, we have great community leaders. The list just kind of goes it on and on. It just goes on and on and on. Yeah. I could go yeah. on and on and on. So Lisa, Tell me something that is, uh, I, I don't want to maybe use the word most gratifying, but what is, what, what is, what is very gratifying about your, your job and your role? Well, there's several things that, that I would say that's gratifying. Um, you know, I, I hope that I'm making a difference. You know, I'm a little spoke in the wheel with that big county wheel, yeah. and I hope that I am making a difference. Um, it's gratifying when I go into a restaurant, you know, I've lived here all my life, so I've, I've got to know a lot of, a lot of yeah. people, you know, and been working in the, the county and uh, uh, the civic groups and things like that. When I'll have a student, you know, I've taught traffic school for 20 years, and I'll go into a restaurant, and I'll have these students that come up to me and say, hey, Miss Lisa, you know, I, I'm wearing my seatbelt now, just want to tell you that. Man, that's you know, so I don't cool. drink and drive any longer, you know, I'm paying attention. Um, 
and then you know it's just gratifying you know that when you that your that your hope can save a life mm -hmm. you know or you'll have a parent that say hey thank you so much for for showing me how to put in a car seat um thank you for being a part of 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 a civic organization like leadership Clarksville. Mm -hmm. um you know you just hope that you that you do make a difference yeah and, and, I'm, and I'm thankful to be a part of the community and that I can be a servant. A, and I think just being a public servant, you know, yeah. and making friends with all the department heads. I'm a very social networking type person. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's just been gratifying there, awesome. getting to know people. Awesome. Well, I'm going to leave you with a gratifying something. Okay. Uh, my granddaughter, probably three months ago, maybe four months ago, I don't know, time goes by so quick. But she was in a, in a little fender bender. Praise God, nobody was hurt. But she had to go to school, driving school, or traffic school. And I called her afterwards, and she started telling me stuff that was discussed in the class that she didn't know that she thought was very, very important. So it wasn't like she just went and check the box that the judge says, hey, you gotta go and do it. Mm -hmm. She actually learned something, she listened. So y'all, and she's 16 years old. That's a very hard population demographic to reach into it and get them to listen. Is. But y'all made her listen, so that ought to be a gratifying moment. That is, that's yeah. wonderful. Well, Lisa, I remember her being in the class. Yeah, it was so much fun talking to you, and just thank you so much you for all you do. Thank you Thanks. so much. Okay, bye-bye.